Yes. Okay. Well, I... well, welcome Jackie Pearson from New Zealand. We are absolutely thrilled to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. We are really pleased to have you here. We've got probably 30, 40 people here, and I know there's about 20, 25 people joining us via Zoom. So okay. um, we're really pleased to have you. I've explained to everybody here that you're going to do your painting and then we'll have questions afterwards. However, if anybody wants to ask questions during the demonstration, if they do it through me and then I can ask you then. And you guys at home, if you can use the chat line to ask questions, that would be good. Thank you. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, shall I, shall I go ahead then? Uh, Please do, yes. All right, well, um, thanks for coming everybody and I'll just switch on to my uh, camera. Um, okay, well, I hope that's uh, clear enough. I've just laid out all my equipment and um, so I'll, I'll have my palette um, visible uh, and I'll just go over it just to, uh, some of you might want to know what paper I'm using and it is this. Langton Prestige Rough, 300 grams. So it's a dollar roundy paper and I love it. So that's that. Um, the brushes I'm mainly going to be using will be uh, these. I'll probably use these more than the others. Um, so that's my Hake brush, which I've cut the handle off and so it's quite a nice watercolor uh, brush. And then I've just got a um, a, a fairly cheap sort of scruffy Chinese brush and a, a more expensive um, pointy brush. This is one of my favourite workhorse brushes that I would do most of my landscapes with. I, I might end up feeling I want to use it, so you never know. And that's my uh, Da Vinci Casaneo brush, which is a number four wash brush. And it's, it keeps a really nice tip. It's synthetic, so no squirrels have been killed for its use. And uh, it's making, and it, it, it's a really fabulous brush. It's, it's as good as a squirrel brush. It's very fine. So I, I'll probably use that as well. And um, I, I often just use my synthetic uh, these two brushes. I, I may not use that. I, I kind of make up my paintings as I go along, but I, I quite like this. If my hake brush is feeling a bit too, uh, too loose, I might tighten up a few areas with this. I like glazing with this brush. It's just a one centimetre oh, yeah. glazing. So I do use, I will be using that. This is my um, scrubby brush. It's a very stiff uh, filbert and uh, it's a short handled and I can do lifting. So I'll be, I'll be doing lifting as well as uh, glazing. Um, my colors um, on the sunny side of his face, uh, by the way, this is George and uh, um, he's a guy who rescues historical uh, boats in uh, around New Zealand and restores them. So he's absolutely, uh, a fabulous man and the the portrait I painted for him which I've I've got here uh, is going to his son and there's slightly more than two hours work on that one so I've reduced I've drawn it up and reduced the size and so that I can uh, do that but the sunny side I'm going to be using um, my cadmiums and my uh, warm oranges so I've got a PO, uh, a Parol Orange um, 71 and Cadmium Red and some Burnt Sienna, also um, uh, some Raw Sienna and Indian Yellow. They'll be on the more the sunny side. And then on in the shadows, I rely heavily on my magentas. So, um, so in other words, sunny, cadmium, magenta, shadow. And I don't use a lot of uh, blue. I will be using cobalt and ultramarine to a certain extent and I, I'm quite into making greys with, um, with this uh, um, uh, cobalt uh, turquoise. So uh, that's uh, PO 
PO50. So, um, sorry, PG50. It's a really nice colour to make greys with. So, I'll remove all of these. I'm painting on a towel. So, I'll just move my board a little bit, and you can see that's just the towel. So, when my brush disappears, um, I'm either wiping it down my sleeve or on this towel. Uh, I, I'm working from um, a photograph. So Sorry, guys. I've just got a I've got a photograph that I'll be I'll be working from. I have painted him before, as you can see, so I feel fairly familiar with him. Um, I'm I've left some of my construction lines on here just in case anybody's interested. But this is uh, I, I'm essentially how I start a portrait off. I do a circle uh, which represents the um, skull to the top jaw and then I add a quarter a, a third of that will be added on for the jaw which is a, a a quarter and then the eyes obviously as you know they're in 50 percent from crown uh, to chin so that that is literally how I start all my portraits off um, depend, you know, and, and then obviously I have my axis uh, for the eyes and the head axis, wherever that is. So um, this is what I've got going on here. So here's my axis, eyes, 90 degree angle, head axis, eye axis, and here's my uh, circle and, and chin. So look, I'm just going to rub off I'm using a, a, a kneadable rubber and I'm just going to rub some of my construction lines I didn't think you'd want to watch an hour of me drawing this up so I uh, did it beforehand um, but I do a lot of life uh, from life uh, portraits and um, I uh, if I do a commission for instance I'll, I'll try and persuade them to sit for um, an hour or, or half an hour, if they don't mind, just get a quick, a quick feeling. Uh, so, so I'm just going to glide over the whole thing and just get rid of some of these um, heavy, heavy-handed lines that I've got here. <clears throat> All right. So I'll just have a quick quick drink <laughs> I'm quite nervous not as right. nervous as me <laughs> I'm fine I'm fine don't worry nobody panic okay um now what I do with my um portraits and all my paintings is I I have a foundation of a um an underpainting so this um uh, picture of George, um, it, it has, uh, he's got a lot of, uh, he, he's, he's very tanned, he's very weathered. So I'm going to um, try and juxtapose that colouring with, he's got his blue jacket and then um, sort of blue greys in, in the background here. I'm going to try and fluff his hair up with um, soft edges. Uh, and so on. So what I'll do is I'll do my um, I'll do the underpainting first, which will include some of the background, some of the um, preliminary um, texture on on his um, uh, jacket and t-shirt, and then I'll dry it. So I'll mute myself while I hair dry that, and then I will just go crazy with this big shadow down the side here, and I will let some of his. Um, colouring uh, leak out and join the background and the background join his face as well. So I'll just see how it goes. So here we go. Jackie, All right, can well, I just, yes, yes. Can I just ask you something? Um, this, the uh, picture we're seeing is a little bit out of focus. Is oh, there no, any no. to put it in focus? A uh, only a little bit, but it's... Uh... Oh dear. Um... I wonder, is it I mean, when it, I'm moving my hand around, it clicks out of focus? No, it's, it, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not terrible. It's not, it, it, it's, it's not really, really bad. It's just not sharp. Oh dear. Um, I, Susan, I don't know. I've got a, I've got a stream cam and I'll tell you what, just 
just hold two minutes and I'm going to just see if I can get a cloth and maybe um, two minutes. Has oh, anybody else think it's a little bit? Oh, interesting. Um, I shouldn't worry about it actually, Jackie, because um, 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 um uh, yeah, it's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I am sorry. Yeah. So, so no, 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 do not worry, um, Jackie. Look. This okay. is the blind leading the blind here, I can assure you. <laughs> well, um, uh, yes, yeah, so sometimes it's just, oh, and the other thing is, Susan, if by any chance my, um, my, my camera disappears and, and I freeze, we are rural here and just, it's ever so occasional, but it'll come back. So if you lose me, just give, give it, you know, a couple of minutes and it will come back. It rarely happens, but I better just mention that. So hopefully it's nothing. Um, no worries so because, well, well, look, there's no worries there because we have the same problem here, would you believe? We have this beautiful brand new facility with no Wi-Fi. So yeah. this is coming to us on a dongle and occasionally that can drop out as well. So, right. so okay. as I say, blind leading the blind. <laughs> oh, well, Yes, um, I can't now, I can't, um, Julia, I can't bring my camera any closer. Okay, fair enough. That well, we might we'll make a fine. difference. Um, I tell you what I'll do, let, let me get the underpainting done and then maybe I can raise my board higher. Because yep, okay. if, if I did that, is that better? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, just give me, bear with me two minutes and I will put my easel under it. Nobody panic. Yeah. So two secs. And this raises it by uh, a few inches. Is that any better? I'll just adjust where it lies. Yes. Now, does that does that look better? Yes. Yes, that is better. Thank you. It is. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. That's great. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> All right. So what I might just, oh no, I'll just leave it there. Right, just put my brushes back where they went. Right, so you can. Right, so um, <clears throat> now I'm just going to uh, uh, whack some, some gray and various other colors so if i drift out of uh, consciousness every so often no don't don't um, don't worry i'm just uh, concentrating but uh, i'll try and uh... worry not we just got we're just happy to watch good <laughs> so i use plenty of um tissues Yeah, I think we all panicked when there was a, a, a tissue and loo paper shortage over here. <laughs> That's right, yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think I'll swap to my... So at, at this stage, I'm just trying to establish a, a fairly good, interesting background that um, I will be overpainting uh, at some point, but um, 
at the moment I just want to get a feeling for um, getting him established in the uh, in the environment. And it's a matter of keeping it um, quite quite runny. I'm going to um, attempt to keep this side here quite light. So it's all on for a few minutes while I just get his, um, all of this established, the underpainting. And it's a matter of um, really keeping your eye on the ball and, and keeping everything working together. So I want some really nice passages of colour, let alone, um, you know, all the, uh, his actual um, attire. And as you know, you've pretty much got to lose yourself in it to, to make it work. Yeah. So I just want to get a, a little bit established around here to begin with. And then we'll start working on his um, skin. So I, I really need to have um, some nice warms coming in now. There's some high points I need to avoid where the, uh, the sun is um, gleaming and bleaching all the color out. Um, try and leave those as white as white paper if I can. Right, let's get some colour. So I'm going to go with um, some burnt sienna and some pearl orange. That's a PO73 variety. Start to just put in some <clears throat> nice warmth in that skin. Get some really strong warmth down his uh, side of his nose. 
But, uh, so this, this is the underpainting, not uh, anything to do with the shadow yet, but I'm, I'm laying the foundations for um, an interesting shadow, hopefully. The beard, I'm going to, um, that's where I am going to use a few, a few blues. And keep the skin reasonably uh, warm. Jackie, somebody has just asked, um, any, um, it's interesting that you're using a large brush. Do you use a large brush most of the time or just for the first stages? No. Oh, well, I'll be swapping. I'll be swapping around quite a bit, but um, I'll probably be using this fairly soon, uh, a slightly smaller one. But I, I, I just thought for this un underpainting part, it's, um, I'm going to just try and use as much of um, of the underpainting as I can with a, a, a larger brush. I'll get it quite dark around that uh, beard area. And then I'm going to, yeah, so I'm using uh, just the corner of the brush of this large brush. So it's a hake brush. And then go right over the eye, the whites of the eye. That's what I do. And then I, I can lift them later. And then we'll get, I think we'll go, start going a tiny bit cooler under that preliminary shadowy area under his nose. And then, and then just a little bit, bit of that cool on his lips here. And then I'll switch to his, um, <clears throat> I'll switch to that smaller brush now and just ease that edge so that it's soft. And then I might even add a little bit more um, pure cadmium red to that nose, make it um, pop. Of course, you know, with watercolours, you, you, you tend to find that they look really good when they're wet and shiny and glossy. And then they suddenly, um, when it goes matte, they go a little bit, um, you think, oh, that's a bit disappointing. So exaggerate to begin with. That's my, my way of doing it. Get that cheek a little bit red. Um, well, yeah, so so now I do need to use a slightly smaller brush to just ease some of these wrinkles and lines. And we'll, you know, do some do some serious lifting as we go. And then I'm going to get my, it's it's a very nice uh, way of making a grey um, crinacridone magenta and uh, PG50. This um, teal colour makes a great a great grey. And then I'm going to actually what I what I need to do is just wet a few areas. and just float in a few little bits of blue. He's got a, a, a bit of a gingery beard as George, uh, but it's mostly uh, gray, so. And then let's get his ear before this background dries. Um, some 
So ears, um, because they're uh, gristle, uh, the light comes through and you see the blood flow very well. So never put dull greys in an ear, go red. Really push those, those reds and understand the anatomy of the ear. And um, it, it's really important per, per person what the ear what the ear is really doing, what it looks like. I mean, as I say, this, this is still the underpainting. So I'm putting it in and then I will feed it with some more detail later as, as the... Uh, time goes by. Now I have got a black mixed here uh, and I use um, ultramarine burnt sienna and uh, quinacridone magenta and I'm just going to use some black and put some um, cadmium red with it and I'm just going to poke a little bit of that ready black in his ear hole here. Actually, while I've uh, got that colour organised, I think I'll just put that same colour, but darken it a tiny bit more. Um, go back to the cadmium red and just get it just right. Um, <clears throat> what have I done with? I did, um, I do, I do use a little um, scrap of paper just to test the, the um, strength of the colour and the uh, actual colour. So I'll just put his... ...nostril in while I've got that colour. And then he'll start to live a little bit. Um, I just want to... I just want to just flick a little bit more around there, get a bit of texture. Um, this is drying a little bit, but um, I think it's okay. I'll just get his neck colour in here. And of course, you know, when you're doing a portrait, it's really important to know um, whether you're looking at a a form shadow or a cast shadow, because you get such different colours in each and a form shadow will have soft edges and a cast shadow will have a harder edge. And a form shadow will take on more of the um, uh, surrounding, it'll absorb more of the surrounding colours. And, uh, but uh, not to say that a cast shadow doesn't, a cast shadow also, um, can contain reflected light as well. And I'm going to get a bit less colour as I go along here, around the side. So his shirt, although it's a white shirt, there's a lot of um, shading in it. So that's why I've, I've got this um, already established as a as a dark uh, grey area here. Now that, this is where I need my little um, scrubby brush. So that's uh, this little brush here. And uh, I just need to push a little bit of the, um, the paint around his nose. So I don't want that hard edge happening. So a bit of, bit of surgery on his nose. Mm -hmm. And we'll just, while we're at it, just, just lift that little, little bob on the end of his nose as well. Um, bring this down. 
and then with this brush so I can let this be drying a little bit I'm just going to um what was I going to do I'm just going to soften off um here while it's while it's damp so that there's a there's a soft edge so this is this is really just uh, um, a sort of a, a watercolor eraser really and uh, I'm, I'm just softening these edges here while this is uh this underpainting is drying i can um i can perhaps work on his beard a little bit So it's very important to uh, our, our light source is coming in this direction here. So it's very important to uh, um, make the distinction of the underpainting that is for under the um, under the form shadow and under the uh, um, under the sunlight. So um, I'm going to have a little bit more blue appearing in the uh, right hand side of his beard and um, as it comes around the around the side here the form the ball of his um, his chin it's going to go a little bit um, it's a sort of a neutral yellow raw sienna is a good a good pick for that. Raw sienna is a very inoffensive uh, colour. Doesn't go green or do anything nasty. And it's a it's a beautiful colour anyway. But uh, and then I'm just going to use this PG fifty. So there's a slight brightness to the the beard in this area. And we'll just scumble a little bit. Now, uh, later, if I've got about eight hours to paint, I, I would do quite a lot of lifting and uh, reglazing, lifting again and reglazing so that there are, it looks like the hairs build up in, in layers. And, and that's uh, something that uh, I like doing, but um, so, do you work with the reference there, or do you work away from without yes, it? I'm, yes, I'm. I'm work. I'm working on. Um, I'm working on a reference. So yeah, yeah. Yep. So I'm. I'm just working from a photograph, Susan. Yeah. I, I have actually got uh, my. I've got him on my iPad as well, but I'm not used to using my iPad at the moment. Uh, so uh, I'll try and find it actually. Anyway, I'll find that when I'm blow drying the, uh, <laughs> the painting. But um, yes, I um, here we go. So um, I've also got him on my iPad. And oh, okay. uh, I had this for Christmas, but I've got to start using it more. But look, you know, this you can't yeah. do that with a photograph. So I'm 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 getting there with the with the tech. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly but surely. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is it is very good having that. It, it's just, you know, this is this is light and I can just hold it like this and have it all over the place. And uh, obviously the iPad's got a bit of weight to it. Um, yeah, so so I think I'm at the stage where I, I probably will just um, dry this so that I can put my hand on it. And then the next thing I'm, I'm actually going to just go for it and get this a uh, big shadow and I want to put a bit more in here so I'll mute myself because it'll make a bit of a noise I won't be uh, very long Yes, <laughs> we 
Oh, good. Okay, I'm back in action. Right, George, what are we going to do to you now? So I think what we should do is get this shadow um, happening. There's quite a lot to do, isn't there? But uh, oh, we've got an hour and a half, so that's all right. <laughs> It'd be quite hard to watch a two hour painting, goodness me. Um, <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> difficult. That's no one's going to sleep. <laughs> I think everyone's riveted. <laughs> So far, well, <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, yeah, so what I've got to do now is uh, is get this really lovely form shadow coming uh, coming down here. There's a, you can see the car shadow here on his neck from his, his clothes. And um, <clears throat> the glasses are an interesting case. I quite like doing glasses, but uh, essentially most of this is a form shadow and you can see around the nose here, um, now, um, this point here, um, he has got a nice big red nose, George has, uh, but um, the, the, the mother colour, the, the intrinsic colour actually comes out in this half tone area. So if you're looking at a rounded um, area, you're going to get the shade and the light and it's it's in between in that just before the uh, the form shadow, which is along here, which is a slightly cooler strip that runs down before that form shadow, the colour is at its more um, uh, saturated. Uh, so the chroma is is stronger. So I've established it here first and I'm very interested in uh, getting that absolutely right. So I'm going to just get that, uh, the side of the nose, um, George shape, uh, before I get into that uh, shadow. Yes. yes. Uh, and then I'll make sure that my shadow comes well away from that side and again, um, soften it up and I'll have to go quite dark here. I'm just thinking it through and then I might have a little bit of, um, although it's not there on my photo, a little bit of sky reflectance coming into the yellow, a bit of greeny colour coming in here in that half shade, half light area. And um, OK, so let's uh, let's just uh, go for it. So um, raw sienna, I'll start with some raw sienna. That will make me feel happy. As I said, that's a nice, uh, happy um, uh, colour that's uh, a bit not very offensive to anybody. And a uh, little bit of uh, cobalt. We'll just have a little bit come around here. And on top of this underpainting, I'm now going to knit um, colours together in a more precise way, hopefully. I'll just get that shape, shape right. And a few stray hairs coming here. I'll just leave some 
a little bit. And I'm squinting and I also use uh, a red filter and I just every so often keep having a, a quick look with my um, red filter. So if I put that over there, well, it doesn't show it very well on my camera, but you can see the shapes of the, the dark shapes a lot, a lot better with a, um, a red filter. Um, right, let's just get some get some colours out. There we go. So now I can I can dip into those colours at will. And we'll get some burnt sienna on the matter as well. So uh, yeah, I use a little bit of burnt sienna just to uh, darken things up a little bit. And um, All right, let's just get some heavy duty shadow happening here. So I'll put the warm on, strong warm on first, and I'm going to rely a little bit more heavily on my uh, magenta now once I get into uh, this strong shadow. Well, obliterate that, uh, hopefully I can find that eye again. Um, I'll just go right round here. Make a little bit of grey up. Then it'll be all right on the night sort of thing, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get... Thing with watercolors, they they do dry a lot lighter than you um, you expect. So you know you have to anticipate that and just be quite daring with your colors. I think to get a nice uh, uh, skin color. I think that's what we're all saying. Wow, you're daring. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I'm sure it would be beautiful. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. Thank you for your encouragement. <laughs> All right, so I'll just uh, hope, hopefully it's helpful to see the colours that I'm mixing. And I, I, I'm relying heavily on slightly thicker paint than I used. Uh, it was quite runny, the paint I was using uh, for the underpainting. So now it's, uh, it, it's slightly more syrupy. I call that my number two mix. I think Joseph's book Vic could call it a number. Um, no, he'd call it something else, wouldn't he? Um, cream or something. Cream. <laughs> but you, you know, you do have to um, rely very heavily on um, different um, thicknesses of your paint um, throughout the painting. Uh, it, it's a, a bit of a, you know, do or die with watercolour. It, it works and it's got to happen all in a matter of a short space of time. 
Uh, so uh, you do have to, I think, slightly accept that you're going to have to, uh, well, I, I always do a draft and a workup and, um, you know, because it, it can be a bit of a one hit wonder, can't it? No watercolour. So I just want to bring, give me an idea of where, where that is going. So far, so almost good. Well, um, okay, I'll just get his eye in because I'm going to lose what I've drawn there. So I'm just going to put it in, but I can always uh, do a bit of, a bit of lifting if it's not quite, quite right. So I've got a little bit purpley down the side here. I'm quite happy with the, the softness that's happening, which is what I wanted. Um, so I'll just go, I, I've, I've discovered this PO73 Pearl Orange is absolutely wonderful for um, uh, skin color. Any nationality, it just works really well. It, it's, it's a tube of uh, high chroma, really. So it's just great. I think I need a little bit slightly thicker red just down there. Now this is where I do need, it's quite nice to have my iPad because I can have a really good look um, at this sort of glow here. He's a very shy person. I'm going to be visiting him um, in a, two weeks because we're going up to Auckland. Uh, I can take in his, his sonny's painting. So I'll we'll just get that established. And um, I mean, it's a choice thing, isn't it? What, how much you go with uh, wet onto wet and how much you, you know, you just keep control of your, um, your brush strokes. And I, personally, I, I like, I think your style comes from what you, how you actually like painting rather than whose painting you like looking at. It's when it's your style, it, it's, it's what you enjoy. And I, I love the wet on wet stage where it's all going a bit crazy, but then I quite like uh, um, detail as well. So um, I suppose where I'm, I'm coming from is that I, I really want to have a mix of um, tight-ish and um, uh, loose because I like painting in that way. There's no right or wrong. It's just quality of whatever whatever you do, isn't it? Really, but it's got to be enjoy. It's, it's got to be enjoyable. So I'm just putting a little bit of red in that crease of the eye, and then I'm going to go over a little bit of it with some very thick black. So if you've noticed, I, I dip into my well, which is the thickest I can make it from a tube, and then I find somewhere clean um, with, and dry on my palette, and then um, just test it so I haven't got a blob, and then I can just get that crease in and there's just and then it goes a little bit redder under under the eye and then the the shelf of the bottom eyelid I can I can lift that later but I'll I'll just get that a little bit of red coming in there um <clears throat> continue around with his uh, gingery beard And I'll, I'll do his lips fairly soon so that I'll feel that I'm getting him established. Um, I, don't know, I just need to ease a little bit of this off here and then allow it to wrap around 
softly under his chin. So any, any hard edges, as long as you work quickly and you don't, you know, I, I think having it all planned and that, that's why doing a, a draft is so valuable because you can sort out all the little problems early on um, and then it doesn't feel too unfamiliar when you come to do everything in a major rush. <laughs> It needs to feel like it's a, a nice um, uh, rush rather than, um, I mean, I, 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 yeah, having said that, I think with watercolour, you have to take things as they come and be a little bit flexible because things, um, well, you just suddenly get ideas or things happen uh, and you, you, go with, you go with it uh, to a certain extent. Don't try and over control it as they say but the more you do preliminary beforehand you are um, more in control and, and that's not a bad thing so I'm just going to get a bit of that pg50 gray under here and um, I don't mind this bit here too much I might just soften Soften that a little bit. Um, bit, of, bit of gin, I'm just going to put a, a sort of another little bit of ginger in here that I can, I can play into with a stiff brush later. So I'll just put it on. And then I'd really like to get this shadow uh, under his neck established. Um, before I do his clothes. So let's do that. So really a cast shadow on the skin is going to be um, just a warm version. Uh, so a little bit of uh, ultramarine, but really just a, just a warm version, a darker version of the warm skin is what I'm trying to say. And uh, it's not the same all the way. Um, along either uh, so there's going to be a shift in um, color temperature um, tone chroma as you go so think to yourself hue tone chroma constantly some red in there that. so obviously being a um, a car shadow it's a little bit uh, it's darker than um it's dark and a sharper edge And then with my little brush, my little pointy brush, I'm just going to get some of his um, some of his wrinkles and I'll I'll make use of um, the colour that I've got there. I'm just going to just drop a bit of water in here. Just to release the, um, the tone a bit more. And um, And then I'm going to go with some um, my base black. Put some uh, actually, I'll put I'll put some um, cool red with it. And then I'm just going to put a sensitive line, as it were, in in there between his shirt and his skin. And I'm just going to put a tiny bit of um, reflected light coming back into it there with some of that um, uh, PG, 
um, no, sorry, PO50, uh, sorry, let me get this right, uh, Pyrrol Orange, <laughs> PO, PO73, sorry, I'm concentrating. <laughs> um, and then we'll just get this uh, crease here. But yeah, so reflected lights, really nice to have that um, PO73, which is the cooler of the two Pyrrol Oranges. There's two Pyrrol Oranges and one is uh, uh, cooler than the other. So we'll just do that and then I, I, I really, uh, before I start doing any more to this uh, face, I think I'll get a bit more established of his jacket because I want to make use of um, what I've got going on here. Um, so I want the t-shirt to be joined to this, um, this quite intense dark I've got for the crevice shadow. So soften that off <clears throat> and then let's get this color probably most of the uh, ultramarine and murk from my palette will make that sort of murky blue that he's got here and I'll just put a few um creases I won't do the shadows uh, just yet but um, just may establish a few creases I just want to get this in here That's it. I'll get my um, strong black and overlay that in places so it's not that's it. and and just um, I, ju I just think I'll make this quite free uh, for his jacket <clears throat> um, And that's where, you know, if you're going to do some nice free brush marks, the hake brush comes in really well. And then I'll, I'll glaze this when that's dry to make it a little bit more uh, sub substantial. So I want a bit more form shadow later. So I'll just put that in. Okay, now, um, <clears throat> ideally I want that to dry, but actually while that's drying, let, let's just put a bit, a bit of form in, um, in his t-shirt. crease there and just a wee bit of detail there. And then I'll deal with the um, side of his face. So um, if you don't mind, I'll just I'll just dry that. So I'll just mute again and I won't be a minute. Wondering how it is. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
And that's really good. It's really good. It's so strong. Wonderful, strong. Mm-hmm. Really? I like strong colors. I like strong colors. Yes. So Okie dokie, that's nice and dry. <clears throat> right, I'll just um, have a quick, uh, a quick think. Um, I think I'll just leave his glasses uh, for now. Um, I think I'll um, do, well, I'll finish his nose, do his lips, and then I'll have a go at the eye and the glasses. I think that's the best thing. I think we're doing all right. So, uh, all right for time, I think. So, uh, I no worries at all. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right, so I'll just clean my palette off a little bit. So I quite like leaving colours on my palette so that I can, one, I can, um, you know, I've got them and I can just keep using them uh, and I don't have to keep mixing them all the time. But the other thing is that uh, uh, mixed up together, it makes a very nice colour called Merck, M-E-R-K. And it's a very useful colour because it's a combination of everything. And uh, so it, it creates unity and it's a nice sort of uh, uh, neutral sort of colour generally. I mean, it, there's a bit more to it than that, of course, but uh, that's generally what, what I do. So, um, OK, so I think I want to get this uh, uh, cheek. Actually, let's just wet that first. So I'm just wetting further than I intend to paint on this cheek. And uh, it, it's just a little, little process. I just want to draw that. Uh, where's my pencil? I just want to, I've got that little line. Um, so that comes down there and it's got another little crease here. So I just want to give myself a guideline there. So here we go. I'm just going to wet this. Now, you know, watercolors full on, except for times like this where you're priming the paper, you're adding water and you're allowing it to soak into the paper just for a few minutes so that when you put the paint on, it's not just going to um, spread and disappear on you. Uh, so I'm just giving that a, a moment and, uh, and then correspondingly you go fairly thick, you know, um, like a creamy mix. And I'm just, I'm just going to use, um, straight cadmium red like I did on the nose and uh, I think that's about right yep that will do so it's not it's not ballooning out too much and, um, and then I'm cleaning my brush and I'm just going to help the edges come along this crease a little bit there and just make that cheek pop out a little bit and then on the peripheries I'm just going to add good old um, paral orange so there we go that's good get that little mole that he's got there I don't think he minded me put, putting that in
when you're doing a portrait, you know, it's good to do a little bit of flattering uh, of people. And uh, when, when, when we get on to creases, um, it's really important never to use grey for creases. Um, always, always use reds. <laughs> Otherwise you can make someone look fairly hideous. Come around the peripheries of his beard to very carefully while that's just drying. And I'm, it, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm, I'm very interested in what's happening here and I'm keeping a, a beady eye on it uh, because I, I don't, I'm just getting a tiny bit of burnt sienna and um, cobalt. and then swamp that color with cadmium red. And um, just make that into a point and then I can just, so, so, so the basis is red and I just want to firm that crease up a little bit. Let's just make it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just very, very gently in those creases, so that it's not um, it's not too heavy going. If anything, under underdo creases. I mean, it's okay on the cheek, but so we'll we'll leave that. Um, so I'm just going to soften the ball of his nose a little bit there while I think about it. Okay, so that, I think that cheek pops out okay. Now I'm going to have a little bit more of a neutral color. Um, I've got quite a lot of red in just by the beard here where um, it just becomes a beard. And I'm, I'm just going to put a, a, a slightly more neutral color just on the side of his face before I drop. And it, and it was just a little bit of Merc. There was PO50 and some other bits in it just to create that side of his face and it'll, it'll pull some of this red in with it. And uh, that, should be, that should be enough to just, create that um, shape around the ball of his um, uh, cheek. So well, just a little bit of information um, here where his glasses are coming over. And then I'm just going to get a little bit of, I've just thrown a bit of PO, 73 pearl orange in there and um now yeah so I, i'm going to come in i'm just squinting at, at my work and i'm i'm just going to come in with some pearl orange into his eye here and just get that socket area um having a bit of a bit of color and tone in the right place there Bring that over and we'll, I'm going to get that shadow in in a minute, but I'm just, I'm just doing another underpainting so that I can shape the eye socket before I put the shadow on. Uh, so that's really important. And glasses can be a real, real pain to draw, but um, the more I do glasses, the more I, really enjoy the difference it makes to um you know blurring colors and it's usually a tad lighter so i'll probably just slightly ease a bit of paint off here eventually so we'll just leave that just get i'm just going to put a little bit more and I'll leave his, just bring, drag that into his iris just a little bit. He's got hazel, hazel eyes. <laughs> 
So I'm just going to finish that bit off, let it dry, and then I'll do the shadow, but I'll, I'll do the lips while I'm waiting for that to dry. It's just a tiny, tiny bit of Indian yellow that I can, I can see just in there. That's right. And I'm going to match it coming down here as well. Okay. Um, Uh, and then last of all, I'll do the creases. So I'll, I'll, I'll do his lips now. So um, a cooler red, but there is cadmium and raw sienna in there and a little bit of um, cobalt, I would say. And there's a, there's a form shadow and a car shadow. So his bottom lip has a car shadow from his top lip and his top lip has a form shadow so hopefully that's all dry I might just lean on because otherwise I'm going to get mucky hands on it okay sorry guys I don't know what's happening there what was that <laughs> um the um Sandra just switched to my computer and not Oh, have, have you gone off um, gone off the screen, Susan? No, we're on the screen. It's just that for some unknown reason or other, the sound has just decided to come through my computer and not into the hall. Oh. We will sort it out. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I didn't I didn't touch anything, no me. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't me. <laughs> Can you guys are you guys at home getting it all right? Oh yeah, it could be that one. Uh, no, just touch it anyway, and that's it. Yeah. Well, no, no. I, don't, I have no idea what is going on. Uh, no, 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 don't shut it down. Um, yeah, okay, what that? All right. Could you say something, Jackie? Please. No, no, I'm, I'm, right. not, I'm not talking <laughs> okay. at the moment. <laughs> All right, sorry. I thought I'd let you sort it out. <laughs> well, what the... I said it was it was putting it through my computer rather than my. What about rooming? No, it's not. Rooming, Tyler. Yeah. I don't know, it's just weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let me have a look. So I'm just doing the form shadow at the moment on his yeah. top top lip. Mm -hmm. And if ever you see any dark, always follow it up with some warm. You can do the warm afterwards or before or both. It's not. Huh. Oh, mm. on the other hand, maybe it's why would they be mm -hmm. doing that? Okay, okay, I will um it could be the dongle. Could be the dongle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, we should be back in a minute. Yeah. I think that's probably yeah. what you no. <laughs> Yep, I think it was that wretched little dongle falling out again. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Magic. So it's very important to get the you know, the, the corner of the mouth very dark uh, because that's going to give the uh, expressive mouth effect. So uh, I, I think 
you know, to put it in wet onto wet is a, a very nice idea. I'm letting, um, I'm getting the form shadow in for both lips, but the car shadow, I'm going to wait until it's all dry. I know it's difficult to control. And then we'll come down here. And then I'm going to use this little brush for um, just trying to get a, a sort of a hairy look on his, uh, but without it looking too fiddly. So that's a, a bit of a bit of a challenge. And um, bring that. So let's put some nice warmth where that's wet there. And I'm hoping that this is thick enough and the between the lips is not quite dry. And I'm just going to, because he's slightly got his mouth parted, which is why I really like this uh, photograph of him. I did another one of him and I think that's on my website still of him holding his cat. And I used uh, this really thick Indian cotton paper for that. So I got a totally different look. It's the paper really that makes the, makes the difference. Um, but you'll see him on, the, uh, on my website holding his cat. But I think he's doing a really valuable job by rescuing these boats. Now I'm just going to move around to the crease of his ear. And just, it's quite a nice brush this because it, it, it'll flatten out for you just when you need a point and then you suddenly need a, um, a flat brush you can use use it for both in an instant and I've allowed his ear to bleed a little bit into the background so it just I don't know it just creates a little bit of unity to the whole the whole thing um, <clears throat> I just need to knit this this little bit of his his skin here and the half tone of this um, crease around his epiglottis uh, just have a look at the shape of his beard there um, it's a little bit irregular I might just have to knit a little bit there and I want to just put a little bit more this I can see his eye nearly dry now so I'll be able to um, I'll dry it off really well and then I can do his shadow and the glasses and I just want to get the ball of his nose just right there as well just a little bit and under, under his nose there and um, slightly overdone it so this is where I come out with my um, reinforcements and that's my 
my nice flat brush and I can just use a corner to shift over any naughty paint where it shouldn't be. And we'll just move that. Mm -hmm. And just a little bit of glazing on the outer nostril here. Just elongate that nostril a little bit for him. Um, okay, so um, I'm still waiting for that eye to dry. I'll probably just hair dry it in a minute, but I'm just going to put, there's a very red shadow just here. So I'm going to just put that shadow on the bridge of his nose. That's better. And uh, there's a bit of a line up here there. Okay, so um, oh, well, while, while that's drying, I can um, use my nice uh, um, flat brush, which has disappeared on me somewhere. Oh, it's on the floor. Whoops. <laughs> and I'm going to just uh, put some form shadow in his jacket here. So I'm, I'm looking for things that I can do while that's drying. Really, it's, it's always better to... Um, so if you, if, you, if you have a look at the um, photograph, he's, um, he's got a form shadow around his, his jacket top here. I've already put the car shadow on, but this form shadow. So I'll put a few, a few little bits of uh, uh, form shadow there. So I'm just going to glaze that in. And I, I like use rather than a hacke brush, I'm using this more springy brush because it's a lot nicer to um, uh, get some of these uh, rounded edges. It's more of a drawing procedure, if you like. So I'll just put some some form in there and just here. So I've got brushes that I would use 90% of the time, but then there's other brushes that come in handy for bits of surgery here and there. And um, let's just put a few slightly warmer creases that's better and uh, just just develop this little area of the t-shirt here And then we'll fade that out there. Some dry brush strokes. I think I could probably just dry brush stroke that um, form shadow in there for a bit of fun. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's a matter of uh, what you what you like really when you painting watercolours, how many dry brush strokes you want and how many you don't. Creates a bit of action and interest. And um, I just want to relieve this collar of a little bit of paint as well. So that it flows around his neck nicely. So this is a bit of, some of my students say, a bit of unpainting. And um, create the illusion that one fold is over the top of the other. And then we can maybe put a 
a hint of the zip in there as well. So I might just scumble that out a little bit and then I can put I can put a bit of a zipper in. Not too much detail, but enough to so I'll get some um oh, a bit of a bit of parallel orange and um Sienery colour and, and maybe just maybe I'll just use a little bit of I suppose if I had some out um quinacridone gold would have been quite good for this and we'll just put a and it and it's quite nice doing um something like that in the clothing because it, it it's echoing colours in the face of course as well which is always a good good plan you know for composition so I'm just going to put that in fairly roughly, just as a, a little thing. Out of interest, really. And a bit of stitching, not a bad idea to put in as well. That will do, I think. Um, OK, I'm just going to mute again very quickly and make sure that eye's dry. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's just get that eye and then he'll he'll look at everybody. Um so I want my two um brushes here. Uh so I've got nice little pointy, they're both Chinese brushes, but you know, I I could have painted it just as well with these two, my Casaneo and my spin synthetic brush. You just need a nice, nice point, but I don't know. I go through phases, which brushes I like really. I'm, I get bored using one set and then move and then change again. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get his eye. I might just call up my iPad and um, have a look at a bit of detail on there. Gone. Okay. All right. So he's got. Um, we do need a little bit of um, hazel colour, but I think I might put that in after I put the shadow. Yeah. So just a little bit of remedial work where on the on the crease of his eyelid here, it's good to prep a little bit so that you, you can overlay the shadow over those um, creases. So I'm just going to use my scrubby brush to just come around here. And while I'm at it, while I've got this brush going, I'll just lift the inside of that um those glasses as well and i can avoid that a little bit when i'm painting because obviously this is going to be a focal point and uh it's important to have your focal points sorted so one eye can be a focal point Hopefully I've got those eyes lined up okay. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to rely on my um, magenta being a cool red. And I'm going to put, um, now I have got a little bit of, um, I put a little bit, bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of um, Indian yellow, and make it um, a nice light color. And I'm going to paint it um, as an underpainting and then put another uh, burnt sienna and cobalt over this. Uh, so we'll just, Under here, so I'm partially, and then I've got a bit of ultramarine knocking around. Oh no, we want cobalt, don't we? So, a little bit of cobalt and magenta. And just let that float in. And then I'm going to get some pure magenta. And I'm going to go right over the eye. Come down. And try and, I'm going to try and keep that magenta intact in that area. I just quite like having a very distinct, cool um, area there. And then that can just fade out. And we'll round that over those creases. And then I'll, I'm going to make a bit of a hazily colour. So I want a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of, a bit of viridian. A bit more viridian. Just test it. Okay. And then we'll put that in. And then burnt sienna and um, and black. Now the glasses aren't the same colour all the way round, so I'm going to thicken and thin the paint as I go. We'll just get some pure. Let's use a bit of that orangey. There's a tiny little bit of turtle shell type material in that, in the glasses. And then we'll drag that up and over here. And of course, to, to, you know, to give the impression that the glasses are sitting on his face, we, we've got to get those shadows just right. So I'm going to just put it's just um, and then I'm going to go back to that. I had that um, uh, black mix and burnt sienna, but I'm going to put some heavy duty um, cadmium red in there. And I'm going to just get that eye under the eyelid, that shadow and have it very dark, just close to the iris. And then I'm going to, I'm just swiping my brush. I'm not, I'm not cleaning it. I'm just swiping all the, most of the paint off and then having more heavy, um, rather than cadmium, I'm now going on the lower lid with um, magenta. And I'm going to take that magenta down to the corner of the eye. 
And this just requires a little bit of um, fiddling. And I'm just going to get that um, iris. That's too much blue. So I'll just... Bring that shadow further over. And then um, that's far too heavy handed in the corner of his eye there. So I'm just going to nip that out and then go back in with some um, cadmium. So the top lid, you tend to need a bit more cadmium in there and the bottom lid um, a little bit more cool red. So I'm just putting a teeny, teeny little bit of, I'm just going to drop a tiny bit of water on that to make that eye, that's better. Um, and then I'm tempted not to do too much to this shadow on this side, but I'm going to just lift the inside of the, the glasses here. And then we've got his, um, his hair to do. I'll probably more or less finish, but uh, obviously there's quite a, quite a lot else to do. Um, I'm just going to get a um, little bit of a crevice shadow happening down here as well. Just a little bit more. Now, I need to stand back from this a little bit. Okay, so I need to substantially make this a bit a bit more um, substantial. <laughs> so there's not nearly enough uh, form happening in here. That's better. So I'm, I'm just glazing this with some um, of that teal, that PG50. And um, a bit of magenta. And it'll, it'll, it'll pick up the colours underneath quite well. And then I'm going to just stroke that in. to the rest of his hair. And I, I could I could spend quite a while on his on his lips um, lifting and adding, so I, I I really do think with with watercolor if you if you can get the basis just right and you can get some lovely flow of colors, then the little bits are fairly easy to look after later. You can lift and add to your heart's content. Really, you're not going to spoil the painting. And you see in this area, I'll, I, I've got a, a few of these little, 
little brushes we can uh, I'll, I'll do his creases next so that we at least get the creases done but in this area i, I can draw into uh, these shadow areas with little um, strokes just a damp brush and it's a hard a very hard brush as well and i can draw into these shadow areas um, little bits of stray hairs and the texture of his hair and, and always soften off at the hairline, just soften these edges here so that the, the skin and the hairline are joined. And I'm just, um, while this is drying, I'm just keeping an eye on this. It can uh, probably just stand a little bit more black and burnt sienna in, in the eye there. And, uh, you know, this is a good, a good point to put it in yes that's that's turn out okay um when it's almost dry so it's not just the paint thickness it's also the um timing aspect so you've got to be a, a little bit of an opportunist this glass here this is where this uh, synthetic brush comes into its own um, what i'm doing is um i don't use a tissue to do this but um i'm dunking my um, brush in the jar and then on my pinny I'm, I'm doing this so it's not much water and I'm just going to take a very slight layer off the glasses in that shadow side and it will have the effect of looking a little bit more like glass and not just a bit of his skin but it will also merge a few little um, areas as well so I'm just I'm just going to ease a layer off there we'll let that let that settle and I'll I'll be doing the same uh, here as well but let, let's um I'll tell you what I'll, I'll press on and get these uh, creases so um I'm just going to put his um hairy eyebrows in and um, and I'm just pushing my brush sort of to, to flick it really so I'll, I better just let me let me just get this the glasses in I'm just aware of the time now so just um, get that strand in of the glasses so at least we've got that there is a shadow but I'll put that in later okay so now what we need are um, tools I've got two sizes in this uh, filbert um, scrubby brush and um, <clears throat> if I can still see my pencil lines um, I'm going to uh, lift and, and glaze. So if I, if I just do his um, major frown line, I'm going to lift that out. And just not bringing it too high. And then bring this one and I'm just going to draw those in just um, just for now. Doesn't help when you've got glue on your pinny and then you rub it into the portrait. No, I, I, I use my pinny all the time, but it's a good idea to keep it washed. <laughs> um, and we'll do. So, well, and then I'll just quickly, now I tend to use my hair dryer quite a, a lot at this stage. So hold on two secs. And uh, now I'm going to glaze uh, that little, um, this so I'm going to glaze the uh, form shadow uh, so uh, cadmium red in a bit of murk on the palette I'm 
and a little bit of precision. And at the, at the bottom, it's a little bit more cadmium red. And at the top, it's a little bit where it, it fades out into his forehead, a little bit more magenta. And then we want that to go nice and have a nice soft edge. So hard edge and, and then we'll soften it off. And then with some cadmium red, I'm going to um, come around the side here and just along here. And then George starts looking a bit more George-like. So I need to, um, it, it makes a difference where you put the cool and the warm in the creases. So that needs to be a little bit, a little bit softer there and then spread that out there and we'll go as it spread within the deep part of the crease it tends to be more cadmium red it's picking up the blood flow um and in the, as it as it spreads out you'll find that there's a little a just tiny bit more um magenta it, it, there's lots of magentas you know just cool red as opposed to warm red that's all. So I won't do all of his creases because he's got quite a few, but um, just to so yeah, you need a slightly uh, fiddly brush for this. I'm just going to. I'm just going to warm his temple area a little bit. I don't know why I've stopped doing his creases, but <laughs> I thought I would. I just, I just saw this and thought, I really need to fix that before I forget to do it. And I'm happy to field any questions if you want to at this stage as well. Yes, we have one question. Somebody said, do you like doing the same person several times? And does it sort of get easier? But I guess you get to know them better. So you, you know, I don't know. Yes, yes, all, all, all of that. And I, uh, when I, I often paint the same person uh, more than once because when I'm, um, doing studies at the art society and go in there they we we often have the same models and I don't I don't mind at all I do find it hard doing family <laughs> because that's a you know because you've got to be nice to family <laughs> uh, well and and uh, one's children have very strong opinions about <laughs> but um So this is the, the nice um, detail stage now. And um, this is where I can I could happily spend. I, I'm actually quite happy with that for a, a, a demo for in terms of it being um, a basis for quite a lot of detail, I think. Uh, so. Um, um, you know what, what I'm saying is that I, I I feel that if I spent several hours on this, it wouldn't be too bad at all. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, round his lips a little bit more. I was just going to put some extra red in that crease there. 
and he's got a serious crease here as well. I'll just get that magenta. I was uh, reminded in the meeting before you came on that um, you sent a beautiful painting over for our last international exhibition. You know, the one of the jazz singer? Oh, yes, singer. that's right. Yes. Oh, yes. It was beautiful, just lovely. Oh, I was very pleased I sold that, actually. Thank you for selling yeah. it. That <laughs> was really good. Oh. But, um, yeah, she's a local... Uh, a local lass and I have fabulous subject. I, I think um, wow. you know getting the right pose I, I, I really like this one of George because he was about to say something and he he just you know has that quizzical look mm. oh and I, I meant to actually I haven't even put the form uh, the the car shadow on his lip yet so that's very important so I'll just prepare that lip and um, build up those uh, creases um, so I'll just get the ball of his top lip happening so there's the yeah I mean there's quite a lot to uh, uh, to do here I'll just quickly do this And then I will uh, put that form shadow in. So I'm going to use about, um, let's see, well, a little bit of cad red and then some um, uh, magenta. But um, I think more cadmium red than magenta. And then I'm going to, let me just, I'm just going to line up with his nose where that's coming from. So, um, if I just get the core, it, it's, it's really important where a shadow lies. So his car shadow from his top lip to his bottom lip, where it lines up exactly on that point of his nose, it's um, only where George would have a shadow at that uh, angle. So I'm just going to um, put that in there now. And then I'm going to drop a, a bit of um, PG50 into that colour and just slightly neutralise as it as it disappears into that corner, so it's not so um, red. And then I'm just going to get those uh, lip creases by dragging my brush horizontally, uh, vertically down. Just get that and just have a little bit of extra colour where the lips are parting. We'll get that form shadow under his lip there. And to make him look like he's got lipstick, but uh, that can all be sorted as well. Just calm that down a little bit. Now this might seem like an obvious question, but how important is likeness to you? Oh, vital. I mean, I, 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 yes, absolutely. Um, I, to, if I'm doing um, a portrait as a commission, I, I, I would happily spend, you know, hours. Um, and what I do is I prop the painting up at the end of my bed and, uh, and I sit with my arms folded looking at it while my husband reads or something. And, uh, and then I'll see something. And then the next day I'll be onto it and I won't let them have it until I feel I've got all the all the um, angles right so so I draw from life you, you know I free draw I don't do any other form of um, you know I don't trace or um, you know grid or anything um, so that you know my, my challenge to myself is to be an excellent freehand drawer and uh, um, I won't get there if I don't uh, make myself do that every time um, because that then obviously makes it a, a, a bit more challenging if you're trying to get a likeness for somebody 
but I'm getting better at it. You know, I'm getting reasonably good at getting a likeness um, straight off when I. So, and if I if I can, I I like if if I'm doing it from a photograph, which is what I would normally do. Although I have done some commissions purely from life, but most people aren't really prepared to sit for days and hours. Uh, but, but if if they want a like a quick, you know, sort of painting, then um, you know, if I if I can, I, I would I love doing it just from life. But otherwise, um, you know, working from a photograph and uh, having a really good, um, a, a really a really good resolution, and then of course my iPad now is uh, looking. Uh, things are looking up for getting uh, good detail. Um, so. Um. That's very pleasing to me personally to hear that you like to get a likeness because I, I think that's the whole thing about a portrait. Yeah, and every every millimetre is um, is important, every single millimetre. So that's my that's my dad. I did I did I did that in about uh, two seconds while he was talking to somebody. Wow, <laughs> but, uh, brilliant. That's really good. <laughs> But I, yeah, I mean, every every millimeter will. Uh, uh, the only thing is, I mean, I I haven't um, drawn this. Um, I did spend a long time uh, getting getting it, um, you know, right. But uh, I, um, yeah, I mean, it, to me, that looks like George. Uh, it, it's not too bad. <laughs> uh, but it, even getting um, the right uh, color temperature will make. The difference in a portrait mm. and um, the right depth of creases uh, will make a difference as well uh, as well as the obvious things like getting the angle of the ear right and um, little nuances of, um, of, of lips and so on so what I would um, be doing now would be um, you know what, what I'm doing now is just gently um, easing lines and, and getting uh, uh, glazing little areas as well. Uh, just so I start getting into the uh, minute eye. And then of course the fun bit is taking all the pencil lines off as well. And um, do you travel much to do workshops? I beg your pardon? Do you travel much to do workshops? Oh, look, <laughs> thereby hangs a COVID tale. Uh, yes, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I've been, um, I, I mean, look, borders are freed up now with Australia and New Zealand, as you know, but we've been fortress New Zealand uh, for two years. <laughs> and uh, we, we actually have done, I think we've done a very good job, but uh, of, uh, you know, having a lot of freedom. Uh, but uh, um, I, well, you're talking, you're talking to people here in Fortress WA who knows exactly oh. what you mean. <laughs> oh, OK. You kept it out, did you? Oh, very good. Well, yeah, well um, we've, we've done pretty well. Yeah. Well, I, I, I do. Yes. The answer is I I. Um, regularly come over to Australia normally and my last workshop was 2020 and then uh, I was supposed to be at Grafton uh, which I do every other year at Grafton and then of course it was cancelled uh, because of Covid and uh, I haven't been back to Australia since but um, the, the plan is to do that and I've got lots of lovely friends over in Australia Good. And we're, um, we're looking forward to seeing Chrissy Menzies over here. Oh, yes. June. She's coming in June for our international exhibition. Oh, is she? Oh, fabulous. Um, not specifically for that, because she comes over here every year anyway, I believe. Yes, she does. Yes. But she well, is coming. She did get stuck for quite a while, didn't she? she did. <laughs> we met up for lunch, which was lovely. So oh. that was really good. <laughs> so that was good for us. <laughs> yes. But yeah. That how about um, how about online workshops? Do you do oh Zoom yes, I workshops? do. I, I do indeed, Susan. I've got reg um, I've got regular termly 
Uh, so for people that I've um, uh, been teaching, you know, overseas, uh, I teach on a Wednesday once a fortnight. Right. And if you look on my website, I've got all the details on there. Um, so, uh, yeah, so once fortnight on a Wednesday, I, I do an international zoom lesson of various subject matter excellent oh well maybe we should we could look at that that sounds brilliant so um do you want me to answer questions uh, on on this or uh, right, any okay how much um lifting does that paper take oh it's <laughs> it's very tough it's really good it, it, you can lift and lift and lift and glaze and glaze and glaze and it won't bobble it's really good wow it's, it's as good as some um, arsh in that respect oh, oh amazing that's pretty good yeah it, it'll it'll never bobble it i mean it, it's 100 percent cotton but it, it's so well um made and sized it's a it's a dalarani paper Excellent, thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Any questions from home? I think you've done an amazing job of um, explaining as you go along. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed. Oh, she's got cadmium and stuff. Too. Yeah, do you, do you specifically choose whether you use transparent colors or or not or oh, is it just um, what colors are there um no i um i use um i use both with a purpose uh so there uh, sometimes the answer is susan i need that color so i will use it i mean in watercolor you can make them all behave transparently anyway but I definitely use transparent colours for certain areas and I'll pick on those, especially for underpaintings. And then as I thicken the paint up as I go, I will deliberately use um, um, more granulating colours. Um, and then also the flo flocculation of colours where they do lovely patterns and, you know, spray and let it all happen. There, there's all of that as well. So I'm, I'm not into brands that only state they like just pure transparent colours. I really do like my granulating colours as well. Ooh, that's great. Um, I've got, got some lovely comments coming through here that this has encouraged people to be braver with colours. Oh, How yes. good is that? That's really oh, yes. good. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad I've, uh, I've been. I'm glad I've been useful. <laughs> well, you have. Um, I mean, it's the whole process that has been really, really interesting to see and fascinating. And I think. I can't believe they put so much red in and, and how effective it is. And yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm with the person who said about using bold colors. I'm, I'm gonna go for red in future, definitely. It's just marvelous. Yeah, I, says, whatever yeah. skin color you are, are going to use, you need, I, cadmium red really is, uh, is the, you know, it, it's hemoglobin. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, quite, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, look, I've got some lovely messages coming in here. Matt, uh, brilliant, fabulous work. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for a very enlightening and inspiring demonstration. There you go. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. All right, I'm getting more. Amazing to see such dynamic colours. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I would agree with that. It's It's been really enlightening. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> lots of water, lots of pigment. <laughs> and also such great explanation as you went along. That's been, a, I think that's probably why there's not many questions because you've just pretty much said everything to us as you went along, which is marvellous. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, well, you've been very, um, ma ma you've made me feel very easy because I have to say, Susan, I was a bag of nerves before I started. <laughs> We, we did lose you at one stage, I'm afraid, because oh, the no. dongle died. Oh, dear. <laughs> die. No, it just, oh, these things happen. We're getting used to it. So 
Thank you so much, Jackie. Oh, As somebody said, it was a wonderful, wonderful demonstration. And I know um, that it's been, oh, that's good. It's, it's been really informative to everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's been wonderful to meet you. Shall I give you a, a wave? So, um, <laughs> thank you. Cheerio. Bye-bye. And thank you so much. I will be in touch.